So it's from another side of the world. It's called the monkey trap. And the monkey trap is just incredible. It's ingenious. It's the best way you can imagine to capture those high flying pranksters up in the treetops. If you're native down on the ground, and I've seen these videos, this is actually not a preacher story. This is true to fact. There, there were explorers that went in with cameras long before the internet was embedded in the early 1900s. Um, Frenchmen filmed natives in probably um, Africa or Southeast Asia preparing the monkey trap. Now, this is fascinating. The natives would take something. Let me reach into my preacher's toolbox and pull out the object lesson. They would, they would take a gourd, a gourd large enough that a monkey could get his hand in, hollow it out, make sure the vine's still attached. In this case, the vine died off a long time ago, and I've got a rope. All right, so you tie the vine off to a tree or a sapling or something, stake it down so it won't be pulled out later by the monkey. Cut out just enough room for a monkey's empty hand to reach inside. And in there, you've got something the monkey likes. Now, I'm not sure a monkey's going to like apples. That's just the illustration here. That's what I had handy. Um, it's probably some sweet meat or something. It would drop in. And then the monkey come along, unsuspecting anything, gets a whiff of something he desires, reaches in, big enough for his empty hand to go in, grabs it, makes a fist around it, and now can't get out. He's caught. And he's going to be there. The, the natives are going to jump out from behind a tree or a rock where they've been watching. And they're going to come over and knock him on the head and carry him off to market. Or they're just going to carry him off to market like that because he's truly caught. But he's caught. He's thinking, somebody get me out of this. But he's caught by his own desire. Now, if he would just let go, stop, just let go, he would be free. And he can run off and escape his captors. Now, that, to me, is just the most wonderful is illustration of something James, I'm, I'm reaching from my Bible here, something James tells us in chapter 1, verse 14, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. See, it's that enticing thing. It's the thing that the uh, forbidden fruit, it's the thing that we kind of know we shouldn't be reaching for, that we shouldn't have. But once we're hooked, we feel like we're in its grip, whereas in actual fact, we're the one grabbing hold of the wrong thing. And it's always in our power to, to let go or to call upon God to help us to let go. And this is never more plain. Oh, by the way, J James sums it up by saying, do not be deceived, my brother beloved brethren. But this is never more plain than when it comes to negative emotions like fear or anxiety or, or um, despair or depression and um, or anger and bitterness. We're, we're in the grip of them, aren't we? When something happens, we our heart sinks or get angry or we become afraid. And, and we're in the grip of an emotion. No, we're not. We're the ones gripping the emotion. Jesus says, Come to me, cast every care upon me. And, and then what, watch, grace begin to happen. The letting go, the setting free, the, the realizing you, you don't have to be holding on to that. There is peace and freedom on the other side. And this is exactly what we teach through our absolutely free e-course for healing at healingstreamsusa.org. Come on by the website. Visit us there. Take the course. If, if you're somebody getting caught in the monkey trap of negative emotions, you have a hard time getting free, and the devil just knocks you over the head anytime he wants, keeps you captive the rest of the time, uh, that's no way to live. It's so much better to enjoy the peace and freedom that the Lord gives. But for that, we need to learn the ways of letting go of those negative emotions. And that's what the healing course is all about. Hope to see you there.